Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brethren and sistren, to the Tawahado Bible Study Podcast. As always, you may subscribe, share, and support. You may subscribe wherever you hear this, be it Transistor, Anchor, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, Wazata. You can support by heading over to patreon.com slash tawahado, T-E-W-A-H-I-D-O, or subscribing to the newsletter at aksum.substack.com. And you can share the very words of God you hear read aloud and recited by me and or the link to wherever you found this bad boy. We are in the pen ultimate chapter of the scroll of Revelation. That is the second to last chapter of the scroll of uncovering the scroll of the apocalypse in quite an apocalyptic era in 2021. Anyway, we are reading in the KJV and we are going to go do verses one to four first. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. You see this dichotomy between the former and that which is coming, with death and life, between sorrow and happiness, crying and, uh, well, not crying with pain and the pleasure of doing God's will. As the church, which is perfected in the holy city of Jerusalem, a city crafted not by crafting men, not by humankind, not by the works of our hands, but merely by the will of God, it is sustained, and not agriculture that comes from the ground, but heaven-like manna that comes from the heavens, from the skies. So it cannot be the will of man. It cannot be the works of man. You have this perfect bride for the perfect bridegroom. The old heaven and the old earth are gone. There is a totally new creation, a new heaven and a new earth that will be in full obedience, in full submission to the will of God. And we'll see this dichotomy, especially in verses nine to the end. But for now, verses five to eight. And he that sat upon the throne said, behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. I am alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Dying once is bad enough. It means you have no more life here on earth. The second death erases you. It's like in your phone, if you have a smartphone, you delete a picture, you think it's gone. No, go to your albums, especially on those Apple devices. Go to your albums and there will be a deleted column. You see the same thing on computers. You think you've deleted something, but you go to the trash bin and they're still there. So then you go in and then you delete them permanently. You delete them forever. This is the second death. So he doesn't just promote 
oral traditions. He doesn't just say, speak the words that I speak to you, but he speaks to him and he tells him to write what he says down. He differentiates the oral tradition from the written tradition. And he says, write this down. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, which means you cannot change this life-giving message. It's committed to the written word and I am its beginning and I am its end. And so there's no if, ands, or buts about it. Obey or taste the second death. Be deleted permanently, forever. Verses 9 to the end of the pen ultimate chapter. Sometimes you just have to hear Revelation and not hear Hanok. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names were written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof, and the city lieth four square, and the length is, a lar is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, an hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel, of the messenger. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysoprasus, the eleventh, a jacinth, the twelfth, an amethyst, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. This is the whole message of Revelation, of the uncovering of the apocalypse. Be hopeful. Be encouraged. The woes are passing. The goodness is coming and shall remain for those written in the book of life, who are those who write in their thoughts, who write in their words, and who write in their very deeds the will of the Lamb and the will of God. The light of God and the light of the Lamb are giving sustenance. They're feeding this place. There's no need for the sun or any of the stars of the sky. There's no need for the sky itself, the heavens. There's no need for the earth. There's no need for walls. 
there are no need for bricks to build walls instead you just have god himself who is the heavenly city who is the new heaven who is the new earth just a funny aside to end on this positive note chalcedon is one of those interesting councils in his rise of scripture audio series father paul nadim tarazi calls it the saddest moment in church history and i concur although i'm also saddened by ephesus for other reasons here this is what reminds us context 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 if you're reading revelation and you're thinking about the global conferences of the church the church councils you will be mistaken because it has nothing to do with it. It doesn't happen till centuries later. So in the Amharic and the Ge'ez, Aksumite school of biblical exegesis, I was listening to this chapter and it was funny to me because it said, Kelkedon Melkamno, Kelkedonim Getano, Andim Kelkedon Getano. Chalcedon is good and Chalcedon is actually representing the Lord. And so Chalcedon is good sounds funny if you don't take it in context. It's not talking about the church council, but it's talking about this precious gem and this precious stone or gem, which is listed with like 12 other precious gems. I mean, there's so many, uh, there's pure gold and, and all of these, these 12, uh, the amethyst and the jacinth and the chrysolite and the beryl and the chrysoprosus and the topaz, which is of course, my uh, birthday stone it's also the stone of ethiopia uh, you hear in the book of job the ethiopian topaz so ethiopia was known for the topaz in any event the chalcedon here or the chalcedony however you want to pronounce it is just one of these precious stones that are garnering the city and and we go through the passage and we realize there are no precious stones at all because there's no building it's God himself. And so the Aksumite School of Biblical Exegesis understood this, that the precious stone is the Lord himself and the teaching that he presents us with for each and every single crooked generation with the hope that someone hearing this message at some time will repent, which is to turn 180 degrees and be written in his book of life may we be numbered among those written in his book of life glory to him